built on relationships, focused on people, and rooted in the community. Welcome to the Build Blue Podcast. Tune in for weekly episodes featuring guests who are building a better tomorrow. You'll hear inspiring stories from industry leaders, business owners, community partners, and our team members. The Build Blue Podcast, where construction comes to life, an Apex Construction Group production. Welcome to the Build Blue Podcast. My name is Jess Blaze with Apex Construction Group, and we are doing our very first podcast in our new space, downtown Mankato. Welcome, Leah Trelevin from Sweet Haven Tonics. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. And we are sipping on a mocktail made from some of your products. And we're going to talk about your products and your business and just your super cool story of how you got from uh, being a middle school teacher to here. Yeah, it's a good story. It's a good story. So <laughs> we'll start by letting you introduce yourself and your company. Great. My name is Leah Trelevin. Um, I'm the owner and CEO of Sweet Haven Tonics. We started in January of 2021. Um, yeah, it started as a COVID project. We all had one, right? We all had one. So this was mine. I was teaching from home. I was uh, in my fifth year of teaching seventh grade at Newell Middle School, which I love. Mm -hmm. And there was just such a lack of creativity. I just, the thing I loved about my job the most was the kids. And so not being with them and interacting Mm -hmm. with them was really trying. And so to be at home, I was just craving a creative outlet. So I said, I'm going to make some gifts for my family. And I know better than to pretend to know how to bake and give them those (laughs) awful gifts. So um, my family loves to gather together around happy hour. We get together and play games once a week and have a drink. And it's really that moment where, of course, we all have such busy lives. Mm -hmm. But we all grab a drink and we take a sip and like your shoulders relax. And that moment when you sit back in your chair and you make eye contact with someone that you haven't seen all week and you just really reconnect, Mm -hmm. which is so important when life is so busy. And especially at that time when there was so much connection through a screen Mm -hmm. to actually be able to get those moments back now that things are more normal. Yeah, You really appreciate it. So it was gifts for them. And the funny thing is my first rendition, I don't know if you've heard of shrubs. I have not. Not in the ground, not the plant. Okay. Uh, Shrubs are a vinegar-based concentrate, similar to what I make. And so I I love vinegar. Mm -hmm. And so I made these very vinegary concentrates. I was like, all you need to do is add spirits and they're great. And they tried them and they're like, are you sure that's all you need to add? (laughs) Love my family. And it brought us to where we are now. So it really helped me balance out Mm -hmm. and come to the rendition and formulation that is very spirits plus Sweet Haven and a little sparkling water is a great cocktail. It is. And so um, we're trying a new flavor. Yes. Can you want to talk about I I don't know. I have questions here. We're off script already. I know. I'm like, I love it. This is not going (laughs) to follow the questions. So um, it's really good. Thanks. It is blueberry with mint and black tea. So it's our spring seasonal. We have five standard flavors, and then every season we bring in a new flavor that really exudes the season. So for me, like an iced tea is just mm-hmm. very spring, and we use locally grown fresh mint from Under the Sun Herbs out of Medelia. And, and a lot of your stuff is locally grown, right? We do as much as we can. Sure. You know, we use a lot of citrus, not a lot of locally grown lemons. No, nope. worth using. Yeah. <laughs> Um, But whenever we can, we do. So we've used apples. We use lots of herbs. Under the Sun Herbs will actually have um, a Sweet Haven field for us this year. So I said, I'm going to need like a lot of herbs because every batch has five pounds of fresh herbs in it. I was going to ask. It's a lot. When you, you know, when you, I think of making a drink with mint and it's like one leaf of mint or two mm-hmm. leaves yeah. of mint. But yeah. I imagine this is a lot. the concentrates take more. Yeah, absolutely. So it's um, it's a great summer seasonal. We just have it as a mocktail, which is great. The depth of flavor in these with the vinegar base allows you just to mix them with sparkling water yeah. and enjoy it as a mocktail without needing the alcohol, if that's what you want. So if you were going to make a cocktail out of this blueberry one specifically, um, what spirit would you recommend? 
I have to shout out to Jay Carver's runestone, rye bourbon. You wouldn't okay. think. I, that's not where um, I would have gone. Right? You would, and the, the typicals are like, rum would be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Vodka is great. Gin is a dream. But this runestone, rye from Jay Carver, two ounces of that, three quarters ounce of this, mix it. It's incredible. Okay. I We just had um, the crew from FOCP here yesterday and we were promoting the beer brats and bourbon event yeah so that just made me think of that so might have to get a little i see a partnership potential there oh yeah yeah we've uh we've connected and they use our concentrates in their tasting room and sell them there too perfect yeah um so we have to ask our apex icebreaker because we ask all of our guests this um when you were a child what did you want to be when you grew up for a hot second i wanted to be an astronaut Okay. And then I was like, wait, that's dangerous. (laughs) And I am not a, I'm a risk taker in business and life, but physically I like to keep this person safe. Mm -hmm. So even as a child, um, my, both of my parents are teachers. So my mom still teaches reading intervention and my dad has taught everything from kindergarten through college. So I grew up watching to educators and I knew that's what I wanted to do that's very cool so that's what I went to college for okay and you taught seventh grade did you teach have you taught anything else in your teaching career um I taught eighth grade my very first year taught some math my first year that was when there was like one teaching job and 200 candidates <laughs> a little different it's a little different now (laughs) yes Um, it is but yeah I've I love teaching and I love kids and when I left teaching I didn't leave with a bad taste in my mouth I left loving it but I knew my attention was split I was Mm -hmm. really excited about trying this and giving it my full attention and I always have promised myself and my students that if I'm not a hundred percent here it's time for me to step away until I'm ready to be a hundred percent that's great Uh, So your business has a great story. We touched on it a little bit at the beginning, um, but let's get into a little bit more of like those trial and error things and, and just how the idea came to be and things like that. Yeah. So like I had said before, it was the gifts from my family. And we were all in the middle of COVID, like itching, clawing Uh our way out of our houses. (laughs) And I said, I'm going to make these. And once my family confirmed that I had come to a recipe that was worth selling, I started just posting them on Facebook Marketplace. And my community and people I knew were buying them and trying them. Um, There's a great uh, local shop called Ada Zinnia in New Alm that has been like our absolute greatest support they're our number one selling location. They will carry everything that we do. And they said, you can come and do a pop-up shop here. And the response was phenomenal. So that was really fun. And along the way, I think I just haven't been afraid to change. Mm-hmm. So as I started, the labels were like handwritten on brown paper stickers on the bottle. And then I got fancy and created a Word document <laughs> and then printed them out and cut them apart and (laughs) then I did a three column label and you know so it was just Mm -hmm. I wasn't afraid to put something out there that wasn't like perfect I just wanted to put it out there and get feedback Mm -hmm. and so even the names of them have changed first it was the cosmotonic and then it was the new fashion cosmotonic and then I met with the bartender. He's like, you really, people think you can only make a Cosmo or an old-fashioned with this, but there's so many things you can yeah. do. So then we decided to go with just putting the ingredients on them, the spice cherry and orange or the grapefruit, mint, and rosemary, so that you see the flavors, you know what that's going to pair yep. nicely with, and it really opens it up for people to try anything. To their own interpretation. Yeah. Of whether it's a mocktail or a cocktail or what kind of spirit they want to mix with it. Yeah. Have you saved all of your iterations of your of your labels and your branding? I probably should have done a better job of it. I'm not a person who holds on to things. So I think I took a picture and then I just tossed them, probably. That's all right, too. (laughs) Um, So you went from making the drink mix concentrates in your house, and now you're selling these products all across the upper Midwest and probably beyond um, even the upper Midwest. So what has it been like to see this grow so quickly? Overwhelming yeah. in a really good way. Um, yeah, it was, it's been wonderful to see. You know, of course, we've sold across the country. Um, 
And of course, it's like my family in Connecticut at first and my family in California. (laughs) So it's like, thank you, coast to coast now. Um, But really now our sales are, we're getting consistent sales from across the from across the United States. And it's been really encouraging. I think as a new business with a new concept that I made, Mm -hmm. you are, I was initially very needing of that reaffirmation that it was actually good. Yeah. And so every tasting I would go to, I would kind of like, here, try this. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) Question mark? (laughs) Question mark. So it's been a great, it's been great to have so many people try them and people with very trained, elevated palates try them and say, this is lovely and it's balanced and that's so exciting. Do you have science, no. chemistry background at Not all? Not at all. Not, Not at even all. a little bit. So was it just like a dash of this, a pinch of that until you got to the... Yeah, so I started with a recipe that was for shrubs. Do you okay. know, a quick Google yep. of yep. a shrub recipe. And I started, there's cold renditions and hot. And then I took that and I just kept um, molding it into what I wanted to be a very complete product. And I learned a lot. So while I was teaching seventh grade, I'd be on my lunch break taking my acidified foods course online. And you know, there, I just, as an educator, I just am like the nerdy, like, oh, I just love to learn. <laughs> And so I just kept learning. It was so exciting to know that if I took the steps to learn something mm-hmm. new, it opened a new door. That's so cool. Uh, let's talk about some of the local places where your products are available. I know you have retail and then you have some of the local restaurants who are also serving your products. Yeah. So we, I mean, Minnesota's the best. Yeah, the best. New Alm, Mankato, this whole southern Minnesota has been incredibly welcoming and supportive of small local businesses like mine. Right now we're in over 80 locations. Wow in southern Minnesota. We have a few in the Twin Cities. Uh, we'll be expanding out to the Rochester area soon. Cool. Um, but yeah, the best place to find where you can buy us and try us is on our website. There's a Find Us tab, and you can go there and you can see where you can shop for it and the places you can taste it. Um, and then there's a little star icon if you can do both. Oh, so, perfect. Right? As a teacher, I'm just very organized <laughs> still. <laughs> gotta let everybody know what they can expect. Um, what other what advice would you give to other aspiring entrepreneurs? Just keep putting one, just start doing it. Don't I have this sign in my house. Um, there's a brewery that we love in the Twin Cities, Able Brewing, and they have the sign that we bought years ago that says begin before you don't. And I love it. Oh, that's so good. Just begin. Just start Mm -hmm. your work. And actually, when I was a teacher, I had a gigantic bulletin board in my room. The whole side of my classroom said, begin before you don't. So don't be paralyzed by not exactly knowing the path. Mm -hmm. Don't be worried about that it's not perfect yet. Be open. Be humble. Be um, be looking for people who can support you. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. I have asked for so much help. And I've asked legitimately dumb questions, <laughs> but I wasn't afraid to. And everyone really, I haven't had anyone that really hesitated. They're just excited that people are mm-hmm. pursuing their dreams and they want to help and they're excited to be a part of something. Yeah. I think most people do want to help. And it's almost like that old adage, like the only dumb questions are the ones you don't ask. Yes. You know, I have asked a couple that maybe shouldn't have been asked. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> any you want to share? <laughs> uh, so I was a quick story. Um, like, uh, what's the when you're getting a mortgage? Like Freddie Mac and Franny uh, May, P- Penny Mac, and I don't know. Fran- you know what I'm talking about. I know about, what you're though. talking about. Yeah. So they were saying like Freddie Mac, whatever. And I said I wasn't exactly sure about how that was all working. He's like, so could I get his contact information? And they're like, uh, no. I was like, oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> As I was very ready to call up Freddie. And Freddie, ask, hey, it's Leah. And ask some questions <laughs> and get some clarification. Let's, let's like get this deal done. There's no one I'm afraid to ask questions to or to approach to support me. So even Freddie, I would have. Even Freddie. It was fun. Freddie, if you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> Franny, you too. Fran- Franny, Penny, all of you. Um, what sets 
Sweet Haven Tonics apart from other companies who might be similar to yours? Don't get me started. <laughs> this is my favorite question because this market is growing. Mm-hmm. The ready-made cocktail mix market is growing. Um, a couple things that set us apart. First of all, we we work from scratch. So we don't bring in anything that's been processed other than a dried um, spice. So we use cinnamon sticks and dried star mm-hmm. anise and nutmeg and things like that, dried black tea um, and lavender. But other than that, it's high quality dried spices, it's fresh herbs, and it is whole fruit. So our pineapple does not come pre-processed. We peel it. We It comes from a whole fruit, which is what's in the bottle. And so that step that a lot of people will skip, and some will even like skip over the actual fruit itself, and they'll go to a juice or an extract or mm-hmm. another concentrate that they're adding to their concentrate. And we really want to be from scratch. So if you're tasting lime... We have zested the limes, then we peeled off the pith so it's not too bitter, and then we take the meat of the lime and we pro- we mince it up so we get the full flavor out of it. So nothing fake. Mm-hmm. The second thing that sets us apart is that we have a vinegar base. So it was a difficult decision to remove any water from the product because you're like, oh, let's get rid of that free part. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> But we took that out because we wanted to create a very shelf-stable product. So it's not cheap. It's at the high end of the market. It's about $2 a drink if you're buying at retail. But if you're thinking about a nice beer that you're going to mm-hmm. buy, you're going to pay 3 4 maybe $5 for that craft beer. We are on the same level as, as them as far as quality. Mm-hmm. And it's all fresh, some, as much locally grown as we can. But the nice thing is, is if you go and you purchase that bottle for $15 or the, for $30, once you open it, it's still good for two years. Is it really? Yes. So you're wow. not, once you open it, you're not under the clock, you know, yep. the time hasn't started. We're like, well, I guess I better become a drinker for the next two <laughs> weeks to use this bad boy up. So and you very only shelf need stable. a splash, right? Right. So it's not quite bitters. So it's not a dash, but I say start with half of an ounce and then work your way up from there. If you mm-hmm. want something more spirit forward, like a old fashioned or a gimlet or a lemon drop, just half an ounce with some nice spirits. If you want something sweeter, if you're more of a daiquiri person or a mojito and you want more flavor, then do the full ounce with a couple ounces of spirits and some sparkling water. Just play with it and make it yours, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. Um, what is in store for the future of Sweet Haven Tonics? I know it's very exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's really exciting. So I just walked out of our location in downtown New Ulm, and they are turning it, our the old Herberger's building that closed down a few years ago in downtown New Ulm. And right now we're working out of it, doing our um, order fulfillment and warehousing and packaging. Um, They're building our production facility so that we can go from 50 gallon batches to 300 gallon batches. And then the front end is going to be a lovely cocktail lounge. So I'm really excited for that. And it's going to be a cocktail lounge that has a very limited menu. We want to use a lot of high end um, Minnesota made spirits with potentially, we might go away from that for a nice tequila or a mezcal. Um, But we will have a small menu with high quality spirits. And then we will also have an equal sized non-alcoholic menu. Awesome. Which is just not out there. It isn't. So I'm really excited to bring a space and an opportunity for those people. Yes, of course, if you want a cocktail, we're going to give you a great experience. Mm -hmm. But for those of you who want to go out and have a drink but don't drink alcohol, Mm -hmm. This will be a space where you can really feel like it's made for you. I love that. And still have a pretty glass and not That's, get no, a ton plastic of, cups. No, That's get it. Get a tonic <laughs> water with a, in a pop glass. Don't like give a, me that pop glass. Like a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, yes. yes I, 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 I relate and I understand. And so this is so exciting. What's the timeline for this project? We are hoping to have our production because wholesale is our bread and but, the bread and butter of our company. We're hoping to have that part of it um rolling by june and then we're giving ourselves a nice long generous timeline for late fall for the cocktail Mm -hmm. room 
if we get done sooner, we would love to surprise you all with that. But with the way things are with sourcing and laborers, yeah. it's we want to make sure that we give ourselves enough time. So we're really hoping that that cocktail room will also have full retail of all of our products. Um, and then that will be open, we're hoping, by shopping season for the holidays. And downtown New Ulm is changing a lot and growing too. And it's just, that's really exciting. It's so fun. As you look down the block, there's numerous stores that are getting facelifts. Mm-hmm. We have a new event center right on the corner. Yep. Yeah, it's really exciting. And just taking something that is abandoned, like mm-hmm. the old Herbergers, um, our company, Apex, does a lot of that where, you know, if there's a building that can be redeveloped into something, it's just so exciting to watch that happen and not have something empty or vacant and that whole recycling mindset too. Yes, and the community is so happy. Mm-hmm. They're so happy that something that is old, we're actually in the historic district of our downtown. So I just met with our historical planning commission and talked about how can we update this, but how can we also keep in mind the history of this building mm-hmm. so that it fits in with what this downtown once was. So it's really bringing it, you know, it's not like we're replicating exactly what it was, but we want to keep those things in mind as we make our decisions. Yeah, and I think that's so important too. And it was like there was this time like in the 70s where they were just like, tear the buildings down, <laughs> put up new buildings. And now I think there's just a lot more um, – just people want those old buildings to be restored and they want the new paired with the old. And yes. it's just, it's super cool. Yes. Um, is there anything you'd like to add? We want to know your website so we can see those stars or we can taste and we can buy. Yes. Um, and then you. any upcoming events or anything else where we can find you guys. Awesome. Yes. So um, our website is sweethaventonics.com. And there you can shop for our products. You can go to the Find Us page and find all the locations in Minnesota where you can find us. Um, There's a great recipe page where you can go and see that really every flavor can make six drinks and three mocktails. And there's just so many things you can do with each one. So yeah, we're excited. It's been a busy season and we're just going to keep rolling with it and I'm just, I'm appreciative for this opportunity for people to learn more about us. Yeah. Well, we're so glad that you came in and actually I was going to wrap up, but now I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) And we have the microphone, so we don't have to, we can do whatever we want. (laughs) Um, I want to go through some of the other flavors. I meant to do that earlier and I, and I got distracted, but also, um, you just said something that gave me another question. Let's talk about the flavors and I'll think of the other, (laughs) the other question I was going to ask you. So we have a range of flavors. So we've got things that are really cozy. We have a spiced cherry and orange that has all of these winter warming spices and it makes just an instant old fashioned. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I talked about that, but the beauty of these is that it's so stinking simple. Mm -hmm. It's one ounce of concentrate, two ounces of spirits, a splash of sparkling water, and every single time it's going to be great. Because I don't know about you, but at the end of the night, if I'm going to make a drink and it doesn't turn out, yeah. it's like spending time on dinner and then it tastes and bad. And then it's a flop. It's like yeah. infuriating. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we have some nice warming ones, the spice cherry and orange. I love herbs in my cocktails. Mm-hmm. So um, we have a grapefruit, mint, and rosemary, lemon, basil, lavender, and our seasonal, the blueberry, mint, and black tea. I keep the flavors really minimal because I want when you taste it to really get each one. Mm -hmm. I don't just want it to taste fruity. Yep. I really want you to get each one. We have some nice little zinging, zinger ones with uh, ginger, lime, and peppercorn. This was the first one I made because nothing is gingery enough for me. Like ginger beer, I'm like, that's good, but it needs more. more. Give me more ginger. Give me more. So this has 40 (laughs) pounds of fresh ginger root in every batch. Wow. Fresh, sharp intense ginger root and then a little backdrop of the black peppercorn to give a little heat at mm-hmm. the end uh, and then we have a pineapple turmeric and jalapeno oh, i love that one instant spicy margarita yep. lovely nice heat on the back of your throat i did make it for the midwestern palate so don't be afraid <laughs> it's not gonna blow you away it's Minnesota spicy <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> have you had any flavors that you have tried that have been like, nope? Um, yes. <laughs> yes. I did a 
Well, I have a lot of people asking for a sugar-free, and I'm working on it. Because there is sugar in it. It's about half or less than half of a t- typical um, mixer. Mm-hmm. There's about 10 grams of sugar in a full ounce. So if you're using half an ounce, I mean, it's five grams of sugar for a drink, which is really minimal. Yeah. Um, but I tried stevia on Oof. palatable. Nope. It was awful. And then I also was playing around with spring flavors and I found sumac. I was like, oh, that's fun. That's like, you find wild grown sumac all uh-huh. around here. That would be a fun flavor. And it tasted like gravy. Oh, It well. was really not good. <laughs> I tried to do a, um, a Bloody Mary one mm-hmm. and it was so spicy. Sure. I, something about it just, I tried to pare back at any sweetness and then it was just... All pickled. Not that was not good. good. No. What about rhubarb? I had last summer. Did our seasonal was rhubarb. It okay. was rhubarb with ginger and lemon. Mm. Really, really good. I bet that was fair. I just saw someone. Posted. I think we just sold our last bottle of it from last oh. summer. It'll be here soon. The the rhubarb. Mine is like I an, an inch tall. <laughs> <laughs> Keep checking on it. Um, this summer we're doing a different seasonal. We're gonna do a strawberry with basil and oh. chili. Because we have a cult following of our pineapple jalapeno. Mm-hmm. And so just the sweetness with a little spice, it'll be the best acre you've had. So good. Yeah. Um, I still didn't think of the other question I was going to ask. Shoot. But sweethaventonics.com, uh, Minnesota made, craft cocktails made simple. Thank you so much for being on the Build Blue podcast. It's been a pleasure talking to you. We can't wait to see uh, where you take this exciting adventure. Thank you so much. And when you post this, please post the discount code okay. SWEET15. And it will give uh, everyone 15% off their first purchase online. Awesome. SWEET15. You can use that at SweetHavenTonics.com. Of course, you can listen to the Blue, Build the Blue podcast wherever you get your podcasts and uh, on YouTube as well. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you.